Good evening and welcome to the Wilrep Museum's virtual opening of our latest exhibition, Indigenous Women, Border Matters. We are delighted to have you with us this evening and we hope you'll also join us to view this exhibition in person. This exhibit showcases four talented and articulate Indigenous women artists whose experiences on both sides of the U.S. border led them to create powerful messaging about identity, self-determination, feminism, and human rights in their art practice. We are honored to have their artistry on exhibit, and I have the deepest respect for each of them and their commitment to their art and their respective communities. Before we get started, I want to thank our donors for continually making these exhibitions possible with their generosity. I also want to thank the Wheelwright team for their commitment to producing this exhibition under such adverse conditions and exceeding all expectations, including Andrea Hanley, Chief Curator, whom you will meet a little later, Ben Calabaza, our Public Relations Manager, Designer, and Multimedia Specialist, who's working right now behind the scene, Nadia Hamid, Assistant to the Director, our newest employee who takes on every project and does the impossible every day. George Martinez, our Chief of Security, Facilities Manager and Preparator, and Ethan Swergen, our IAA, IA Winter Semester Intern who helped with final installation details. We also want to thank the contractors who helped complete the installation. Our studio photographer, Addison Doty, and our lighting designer, Todd Elmer, have done masterful work for us for many years and three new contractors stepped into our COVID-bound world to assist. Drew Miller and Amy Flowers helped with the installation projects, and Jan Riley served as collections manager and registrar. We appreciate everyone's hard work, and virtually everyone on our staff helped pull this together. And now I would like to introduce all of you to our guest, the Honorable Teresa Ledger Fernandez, the Congresswoman representing New Mexico's third congressional district, elected this past November. She is a 17th generation New Mexican, growing up in a large rural ranching and farming family and knows what hard work means. Prior to serving in Congress, she worked as an attorney and an advocate, winning legal battles in voting rights, tribal sovereignty, protection of the environment, and protection of acequia waters. She also helped secure almost $1 billion for schools, rural health clinics, broadband, businesses, affordable housing, and infrastructure, and then helped build all those crucial components for communities. She was a Clinton and an Obama president appointee and worked as a White House fellow on housing issues and as vice president of the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation. Congresswoman Ledger Fernandez has taken the leadership role of the Hispanic Caucus as a freshman representative and has been appointed to the House Committee on Education and Labor and the House Committee on Natural Resources, two very important priorities for all New Mexicans. As a freshman representative, she also serves as chair of the Subcommittee for Indigenous Peoples of the U.S., as a member of the Subcommittee on National Parks, Forests, and Public Land, and as a member of the Progressive Caucus, the LBGTQ and Equality Caucus, the Native American Caucus, and the Democratic Women's Caucus. We congratulate Congresswoman Ledger Fernandez on her election to the House of Representatives and look forward to her engagement in so many issues of import to New Mexican communities. Please welcome the Honorable Teresa Ledger Fernandez. Hola, ¿cómo están? I'm Congresswoman Teresa Ledger Fernandez, serving New Mexico's beautiful and beautifully diverse 3rd Congressional District. I also serve as the chair of the Subcommittee of Indigenous Peoples in the Natural Resources Committee. I'm honored to share in this moment of recognition for the Real White Museum of the American Indian's new exhibit, Indigenous Women, Border Matters. New Mexico and this southwest border has long been a place of shifting borders and bloodlines where peoples of different cultures have clashed, intermarried, and accommodated each other, and where, in the end, we have developed complex strategies to ensure cultural survival. One of my favorite poems is Butiaga's, You insult me when you call me schizophrenic. My divisions are infinite. 
In this single poetic line, we capture the concept of a kaleidoscope of diversity sublimely and proudly existing in the identity of a single person. Similarly, the United States has infinite stories of struggle, of conflict, of historical trauma, and of cultural celebration. Myself, I'm a 17th generation Nuevo Mexicana on my Latina and Sephardic side, which over 17 generations and beyond is also inclusively indigenous. Having a strong historical identity, even when it includes historical trauma, that is the knowledge that you're a descendant of both the conquerors and the conquered, that you've inherited from both the oppressed and the oppressor, is a gift. It's a gift for a community because if after acknowledging these conflicts, you can like what you and your community have become, it's that much easier to like others then it is such a tiny step to be curious about others and to delight in their difference. This is the opposite of othering. It is the opposite of demonizing others as we have seen too often in the last years. Instead of othering, it is a becoming. This becoming allows us to then celebrate each other's difference. This exhibit beautifully brings our sights to these issues of identity, of conflict, and of becoming. These creative indigenous women artists hold and protect our collective memory and experiences on both sides of the border. These, these stories that they tell us have been the stories and experiences that have been left out of our written stories, even though they are part of our lived history, just not always our acknowledged history, but not anymore. And what better messengers than these powerful artists they have all created evocative and beautiful pieces that give us a window into a world, a point of view that more need to see. Art has the ability to make these experiences tangible and to allow us to immerse ourselves in realities different from our own, even for just a moment. It allows us to experience emotions and connections. It's been a hard year with the pandemic and an even harder last many years under an impressive administration that vilified our border communities. This art is part of our bridge to a better future of understanding. Because art is a powerful tool that can open our eyes to new experiences and lend our hearts to the beautiful cultures that exist around us. Now, let us just celebrate these artists' achievements today and all of the imagination they have unleashed in this exhibit. Muchísimas gracias por tenerme aquí contigo. Congresswoman Ledger Fernandez, thank you so much for being here in support of our opening this evening and taking time from your intensely busy schedule to be with us. It is clear that you have put much thought into understanding the issues presented in this exhibition, and we look forward to further conversations with you. We also look forward to your continued leadership in the U.S. Congress and the state of New Mexico. Now I would like to introduce you to Andrea Hanley, Chief Curator at the Wheelwright Museum. Andrea started her career at the National Museum of the American Indian Smithsonian Institute in Washington, DC. She was the Fine Arts Coordinator and Curator for the City of Tempe, the Executive Director of Adel Adel, a National Service Organization for Native American Art, and Founding Manager of the Berlin Gallery at the Heard Museum in Phoenix. And most recently, she served as the membership and program manager for the IAIA Museum of Contemporary Native Arts in Santa Fe. She currently serves on the board of directors for SWAYA, the Santa Fe Art Institute, Roswell Artists in Residence Foundation, Axel Contemporary, the Santa Fe Community Foundation Native American Advised Fund, and is active in many other arts organizations. She is an enrolled member of the Navajo Nation. Andrea, I'm turning the program over to you. Hi, everyone. Oh my goodness. How wonderful was Congresswoman um, Leja Fernandez. Muchísimas gracias to her as well. I am so thrilled that you're all here this, um, this evening with us um, at the Wheelwright. Um, first of all, um, I want to say that we, um, Secretary um, Holland regrets that she cannot be with he us here tonight. Um, in another, any other way, I think I would be disappointed, but in this case, I'm not. 
her confirmation and her swearing um, in um, this week, obviously she's been incredibly busy making history. So um, we um, are thrilled that you all are here and um, let's, go, let's, let's go on with um, what, we're, what we're here to celebrate. Uh, since this exhibition focuses in on women and in land, I wanted to acknowledge that we're here in Santa Fe and located on the traditional lands of Tewa people. And the Wheelwright Museum is surrounded by Pueblo, Apache, and Navajo communities. This exhibition features four indigenous women artists who address issues on both sides of the United States border and whose practice is guided by current issues of identity, self-determination, feminism, human rights, and their impact on the human experience. The work also explores and questions the way in which indigenous women interact with the land we inhabit. The layering of symbolism and meanings in the work and the deconstruction of concepts like memory, cultural heritage, and the political form the basis of this exhibition. From artists like McKay Lewis, who is Tana Autumn, Daisy Quesada Urina, who is Mexican American, M. Janae Sanchez, who is Latinx, and Gabriela Munez, who is Latinx. I am so excited to present this exhibition at the Wheelwright. I have been a huge fan of these women for both their art practices and their advocacy and community engagement. I've been watching Gabriela and Janae's work since they were in graduate school at Arizona State University. I've also been a huge fan of Daisy Guisado Irina um, and, and have gotten to know her work um, in Santa Fe. She actually was McKay Lewis's professor at the Institute of American Indian Arts and had asked me to come in for her senior crit. This impressive young artist was the element I needed in order to showcase them all. So this, this exhibition offers a very timely perspective of indigenous women and provides a glimpse of those that lives intersect with the border, including those who thrive, who exist and survive. What do indigenous women face in their daily lives on or around the border? These artists who are based in both Arizona and New Mexico are keenly aware of these issues and have thoughtfully addressed, thoughtfully addressed them in ways that are personal and far reaching, connecting and inspiring those who do not witness the certainties faced by many indigenous women today and many times the harsh realities of that life. So I'm going to introduce each of them and have them um, talk just a bit about um, their art practice and, and what they're working on now. So I'm gonna introduce McKay Lewis, who is a multidisciplinary artist. She was born in 1996, if you can believe that. Lewis comes from a small secluded village of Ventana and the Tejana Autumn Nation in Arizona. Her hometown has a current population of 49 and it's located um, 60 miles from the Mexican border. Lewis says that she's informed by her heritage and her people and her artwork is an extension of both her environmental influences and her cultural narratives. She says that her practice is a product of her exploration of creative processes and observational studies. She received her associate degree at Tejana Autumn Community College and went on to receive her Bachelor of Fine Arts at the Institute of American Indian Arts. Lewis is a recipient of the Walt Disney Company Scholarship, and she's been highlighted in exhibitions at the Institute of American Indian Arts. So welcome, McKay, and congratulations to you. Can you talk to us a little bit about your art practice and, and what you're working on now? Uh, yeah, uh, so my work reflects my environment and autumn culture. Uh, up until this work that I've done about the border, my work has always been about the environment uh, I come from a long line of basket weavers and just like them, my work also tells a story. And so <laughs> because I just so happen to live in the borderlands, I figure, you know, why not tell my story of my experiences? Because I feel like all experiences are unique to each person living in the borderlands, you know, from Texas to California, you know. Uh, no matter where you are on the spectrum, and then taking into account, you know, an individual 
an individual's background to like uh, so I felt like my unique background as an optum brings a whole different experience to what border art is out there already. It's been kind of hard for me to keep with printmaking just because, you know, coming straight out of school and from having all the materials and the, um, the equipment into having nothing at all. It, it's, it's been kind of hard for me to kind of gather up all my, what I use for printmaking. Um, but I, I have been planning out ideas about what other experiences that I've had. Like I wanna continue this series and see where, where it goes from there. Great. Well, thank you so much, McKay. Your work is so incredibly strong and we're thrilled that it's in this exhibition. Thank um, you. And now, yeah, of course. Um, thank you. And so now I want to introduce um, Daisy Quisada Urina. And Daisy is a visual artist and educator um, based here in Santa Fe. Um, within her practice, she creates ceramic works and installations that address identity and place in relation to social structures that cross between imposed borders. She has worked alongside nonprofit organizations like El Otro Lado, The Other Side, located in both Southern California and Mexico. In 2016, she co-founded Present um, uh, Cartographers, a collective invested in artists working in the theme of immigration. In 2020, she was a recipient of the United States Latinx Art Forum, Carla Fund Grant. Her work has been exhibited internationally and nationally in places like the Denver Art Museum, um, Summer Hall in Edinburgh, Scotland, the new Taipei City Yingay Ceramics Museum in Taipei, Taiwan, um, and the University of Oklahoma. Um, Quisada received her Master of Fine Arts at the University of Delaware with an emphasis in ceramics, and she's a faculty member at the Studio Arts Department at the Institute of American Indian Arts. So welcome, Daisy. Your work is amazing. We're thrilled it's here. And um, let us know what you're working. Look, can if you talk a little bit um, about your art practice and what you're working on now? Yeah. Absolutely, thank you Andrea for the intro and thank you for everybody that's joining us from all over. It's super exciting to see everybody's faces and names. So I'm just excited to even be sharing this space with McKay, Janae and Gabby. So we're like, yes. Um, um, I, my artwork, I guess it's primarily ceramics. It, it works between sort of um, different areas, different locations. It's very much interested in geography, land, people, um, spaces, happenings, events, um, but it, it focuses a lot on the relationship that happens um, between the United States and more U.S.-Mexico border. Um, my family migrated here to the United States when I was younger, and that's kind of been a huge part of my upbringing and way that I understand and live in the world and sort of transition and consider it. Um, so that's that I think inherently um, becomes a part of the work um, to some extent. Um, it, it thinks about those people it thinks about the histories, it thinks about the actions, um, everything that kind of resides in that space and beyond that space that is sort of divided by a wall at present. I guess my, my work is also very non sort of traditional of ceramics. It's, um, it's textiles that have been coated in porcelain slip um, and then fired. So you're left with sort of a remnants, um, an imprint, um, an, an absence of void, but also like a form that is full of life, of breath, of an individual, um, of a past. Um, so that's that's my work in a quick sort of spiel. Um, at present, I'm teaching Scylla II. We're getting ready to start in-person classes um, next week. Um, and I'm also trying to wrap up a, a project with the US Latinx Art Forum that was community-based. So I was working with youth all across Santa Fe, New Mexico, um, talking about what it's been like um, during this pandemic, what we've experienced, um, giving us space kind of just to share. Um, um, I want to give a shout out to like all the, all the students at Capitol, at Monte, at Mandela. <laughs> I think I'm still making, I'm still exploring, I'm thinking about sort of architecture forms right now within my work and seeing how that can sort of in, engage or 
um, continue to have a conversation about certain events and happenings that are going on. So yeah, sorry about that. Great. Well, thank you so much, um, Daisy. Um, I um, now want to introduce Gabriela Munoz, whose art practice is rooted in her experiences as a migrant living in Arizona, undocumented for more than a decade. Living in the Southwest, her practice is concerned with movements of social justice and radical equality, a racial equality. I could say radical too. Um, her installations, printed works, and collaborations function as a growing archive that documents the stories and the histories of individuals from communities that are under-resourced and under-acknowledged. Her work champions women of color who build a place-based counter-narrative to mainstream culture that values power sharing, peer-to-peer -peer learning, and horizontal leadership models. Munez is a 2021 um, NALAC Catalyst for Change Award recipient, a 2019-2020 Mellon Frontier Dada, Dada, Dadaas Creative Scholar at the University of Arizona's Confluence Center, and is a fellow of both the Intercultural Leadership Institute in San Antonio, Texas, as well as the National Association of Latino Arts. I think I said that right. Um, her work has been exhibited at the Scottsdale Museum of Contemporary Art, at the University of Arizona Art Museum in Tucson, the Mexican Consulate in Douglas, Arizona, and at the US-Mexico border fence. Um, she has a master's of fine arts and printmaking at, from Arizona State University, and is actually um, working for Arizona State University on a very special project, and we'll go from there. Hi, thank you for the introduction. <laughs> um, and just a huge shout out to uh, my fellow artists, Stacy, McKay, Janae, the work is um, my prints and my collaboration is honored to be sharing a space with such thoughtful and, and amazing work. And thank you, Andrea and, and the Will Wright team for bringing us together. Um, and thanks, you know, I echo Daisy's thanks for to everyone who's joined tonight. Um, yeah, I guess, I mean, my work is really, it took me a long time to come out as undocumented. Um, my family also immigrated when I was, uh, I was 13 years old. And it was just, I think, something that was always like a part of my work. Um, I'm trained as a printmaker. So, you know, I, I was trained to make books and tell stories. And in, in this series of work, I started to document, I think a little bit about my own experience as a mother. I have a three-year-old and so Daisy, she might give your dog a run for its money. Uh, <laughs> it can be pretty loud too. <laughs> um, so this, um, the prints are made on handmade paper, um, made with desert plant fibers. So saguaro, choya, yucca, and then the ink itself is made from my breast milk and, and, Mex and Mexican earth. And so it's a all natural, um, they're biodegradable. They can go back to the earth. Um, and they were really, they're meant to honor just the invisible labor of the women all around me who are building community. It's sort of that unseen labor, the domestic labor that um, goes on talked about because it's not compensated monetarily. I think we're like the pandemic has really surfaced so much of that labor, right? Like we are where, you know, I work, my day job is at ASU supporting artists through a fellowship program, which is really wonderful. We support BIPOC artists um, in an academic setting. And you know, then I come home, even though I'm home. So I trans I go from my office to my kitchen and I'm, you know, doing dishes and I'm uh, housekeeping. I'm taking care of my three-year-old and I'm, you know, also trying to make work in the studio. So all, all of that unseen labor that is often, you know, the labor of women um, who work very, very hard. And so, yeah, I think, um, you know, the, 
the breast milk for me became a symbol of nourishment, of, of giving, of, um, yeah, just of, you know, helping, helping an organism grow, right? And that's what women do all around me. I feel like, you know, this experience at the wheel ride when, when we were on site and stalling and um, around each other like that, I feel like I was nourished, like I was nourished by those women who were there, um, like helping us install and um, yeah, it's sort of, you know, I, I get, like Daisy said, you know, like in a nutshell, this is kind of a lot about my work is about, it's definitely rooted in the Southwest, in the materiality of the desert. Um, and it's uh, trying to document, um, yeah, a lot of those stories that we don't, we don't hear about in the canon. Yeah. Thank you so much, Gabriela. That's wonderful. That's so wonderful. And so now I want to introduce M. Janae Sanchez, who was born and raised in Douglas, Arizona, Agua Prieta, Sonora, Mexico. Um, after receiving her Master's of Fine Art from the Arizona State University in 2011, she returned to Douglas to pursue her career as an artist and an educator. She's a fellow of the National Association of Latino Arts and Cultures Leadership Institute in San Antonio, Texas a 2021 NALAC Catalyst for Change Award recipient, a 2019-2020 Mellon Frontier Edadas, Edadas, um, Creative Scholar um, at the University of Arizona's Confluence Center and is a faculty member at Cachise College in Douglas, Arizona in the Digital Media Arts Program. Sanchez's work has been exhibited at the Scottsdale Museum of Contemporary Art the University of Arizona Museum in Tucson, the, Latin, the Latino Museum of History, Art and Culture in Sacramento, California, and at the US-Mexico border fence. She and her husband are the co-founders of Border Arts Corridor, BAC, a 501c3 nonprofit arts organization providing the borderlands community an immersive arts district through binational art walks, workshops, performances, public dialogues and artist residencies located in Douglas, Arizona. Their nonprofit was awarded the Arizona Governor's Arts Award in 2020 and has been featured in the New York Times for producing binational arts install inst installations and performances on the US-Mexico border. So welcome, Janae. Thank you so much, Andrea. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm just so grateful to be in this space with you all. Um, these powerful heads and just thank you for bringing us all together and to the museum for hosting us. Um, I am, as, as you mentioned, I guess you can say a product of the border. Um, my story and family history is really intertwined in that fence um, and I'm starting to, you know, even as an adult, continue to uncover how my life and my history is intertwined. Um, you know, my, my mother was born in in Mexico, but my grandmother was born in the US. I was born in the US. So many of my family members are documented and documented mixed statuses. Um, so I guess um, for, for many years, um, those stories were really not uh, at the forefront, um, not until I, I moved from Douglas and began interfacing with other people, other communities who, who really didn't have a concept of the border. And so that's when I knew that um, my story uh, needed to be represented or my story was important. And, um, you know, just through building community at, at ASU, um, meeting Gabriela in grad school, that was really a, a moment <clears throat> for me as an artist to, to really hone in on what my art practice would be about. And it's really about the Southwest um, narratives um, that are often oversimplified in, in the borderlands and exploring liminal space, which is so beautiful and so fertile, so colorful, um, but it's represented in black and white, um, you know, in the media. Uh, so uh, as far as what I'm working on right now, um, uh, still still working on with um, media, mostly digital media, self-portraits is a, 
is a, is a project I'm diving into, which is something I haven't um, necessarily done before um, up until recently, that um, Gabriela and I are working with a, a group of women from Agua Prieta. And um, this project at Dulia Prieta Trabaja, which is funded by the NALAC Catalyst for Change, um, is all about self-representation, self-determination, and we're working together and thinking about the gays and um, the women um, from, from Agua Prieta made self-portraits. We, we um, provided workshops on how to you know, use a DSLR camera and composition. Um, and so while teaching the women about portraiture and how important you know, having agency over portraiture is, um, I also engaged in, in portraiture. Um, Additionally, Gabriela and I are continuing our, our work with the women in Dulia Prieta Trabaja, and we are collectively um, engaging in creating uh, a series of how-to videos that um, talk about their processes in terms of permaculture and, you know, brick making and all of the wonderful things they do to elevate women's work, especially in their community and, and nourish their, their communities. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much what's going on. Um, just with Border Arts Corridor, the same thing, our organization is, is also working towards changing border narratives. And um, we recently, well, we will soon be announcing six fellows who will be um, creating artwork and, with the goal to you know, build cultural power and change the border narrative. Yeah, thank you. Fantastic. I I just can't thank you all enough. Um, I am absolutely thrilled you're a part of this exhibition. Um, the critical and conceptual thinking behind the works in this show are a foundation for empowerment and change and the complexities behind the border. The act of creation is an evolving process that builds new meaning and context in the way that we drive home the importance of equity centered work and the human rights of women of color and artists. And I find this exhibition a powerful narrative that addresses issues with agency, dynamic and enlightened responses which act as a vehicle for political and social change. I can paraphrase Janae when she said she wanted to share the stories of women on the border because their determination is representative of million, millions of women of color around the world who integrate ancestral practices into everyday life, contributing the well being of their families, of their neighbors, and of their communities at large. So I want to thank you all. You guys are rockers, and this show is amazing. And I hope everybody gets to see it because I'm so incredibly proud of all of you, and I'm thrilled that the wheelwright is able to give such a timely and important um, voice to you all. Um, and now um, I wanna make sure that you all know um, people who have been here um, that we are definitely having plan, we're gonna make plans for curatorial circle or um, the curator circle um, public program. So we didn't hear a lot of, of more about pieces in the show because we wanna save that for um, down the road and um, those uh, will be announcing the times and the dates for those um, in, that will start in May. So um, here are some closing remarks from our interim director, Jenny Heron, or Jenny, um, Jenny Higgins. Thank you so much. And um, thank you. Thank you, Andrea. And I want to personally thank our exhibition artists once again for their participation in this important exhibition. Daisy Quesada Yarena, Gabriela Munoz, Janae Sanchez, and McKay Lewis. This exhibition opens formally tomorrow morning, Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. as a members only event. And there are four 90 minute periods to choose from. We urge you to make a reservation online at www.wheelwright.org and the event is free to all members as always. And we have free Wheelwright logo masks for all participants thanks to the generosity of two of our trustees. We are continuing to successfully practice safe COVID protocols 
including required masks and hand sanitizer as you enter, and again, if you enter the case trading post on the lower level, which is the best Native American art museum gift shop in the city. We operate under the New Mexico Safe Promise Guidelines. Our regular hours are 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday, and again, we encourage you to make reservations to keep everyone safe. We wish to again thank all of our donors who do so much to make our exhibitions possible with their generosity and their enthusiasm. We also want to thank all our members for their steadfast support and especially their amazing generosity during our current membership endowment match campaign, which has made a critical difference over the past nine months. If you haven't done so already, please consider joining as a member of the museum or renewing your current membership which includes an endowment match from a ger very generous former trustee. I also want to announce that the Board of Trustees successfully raised over a million dollars so far in an ongoing campaign to increase our endowment, despite the chaos of the pandemic this past year. The museum is especially fortunate to have such great leadership at this difficult time, and the museum is strong in large part due to their guidance and their financial support. We hope you will consider supporting the endowment campaign as it moves to a public phase this spring. Thank you for your participation tonight. We hope you will return for future events with us, including Curator Circle events being scheduled with the artists you met tonight, which will be announced in our e-blast and online. And please mark your calendars for the next virtual opening, which will take place on Friday, April 9th at 6 p.m for the opening of an exhibition titled Chanteau Begay, Eyes of the World, a comprehensive look at Chanteau's broad body of work and his extraordinary talent. We wish you a good evening and a lovely weekend, and we invite you to come in and see the museum exhibitions really soon. Good night. <laughs>